Got a X1 here with the N55. And being an X1, it's got X drive, so that makes everything in here tighter. Now, you can see, I've already removed the fan, which is easy, just remove the shrouding. Uh, there's one bolt right here. You got your connection, which sits about right here. And then if you go on the bottom, you'll have one bolt right here. These, this bolt and this bolt up here will be T25. I believe the intake shrouding is a T20 or maybe a T15. And then these are just clips here. You wanna make sure you get this coolant line off of the fan. We also took off the radiator, which is just these two quick release clips. And then that pops off. So on the bottom of the intercooler, you have this. You just spin it like that and then it'll come out. Took off the stiffening plate. So I've also drained the coolant out of the radiator. There's a blue plug right here. It's a big Phillips or you could use a big flathead. Um, yeah, that's gonna dump out a lot. So make sure you have a big jug. Uh, yeah, be prepared to get splashed on. We also have the sway bar bolts out. So that's just nice and loose. And we removed this bolt or this nut on the power steering line, I believe that is. But yeah, so that way we can get it out of the way if we need to. If you've watched any of the other uh, water pump videos, you'll notice it's hard to find information on X drive models. Now that's cause this is a tough job. You can see the subframe here is a lot larger on the X drive models. And this comes down a lot further. So you don't really have the access from this side. I mean, you have some, you don't have that much space from this angle though. Yeah, again, you do have some, but it's limited. So mostly you're gonna be working at it from this angle. The biggest difference is again, you have all of this stuff in the way. So if you look, these two bolts that connect the water pump to the thermostat, if you go underneath here, you'll notice you don't have much room because they're at an angle and you can't sneak through here. Can't go around here. So really the only way you have to do it is here. Now the water pump bolts here, here, and up here. This one I already have removed because um, when I did my diverter valve, I did not put this one in. That took me about 30 minutes to get off without removing this hose, but um, I think I ended up snaking through here and then you can see that's how I got it. This is the connection to the um, thermostat. It goes right here. You just pry this off and then it slips out. Get that out of the way. And so now we're gonna be disconnecting this hose to the thermostat. We're gonna need to disconnect this hose, that hose. We got a hose back here. So pretty much the only thing holding all this in is, you know, your bolts down here, these two bolts and all your hoses. Most of the hoses are quick release or they have just an ordinary clamp, flathead or six millimeter. And yeah. Now the way to remove these quick release hoses is using a pick tool. So you can just go up underneath it and grab onto it. And then once it snaps up like that, that means you're good to go. This under here, and then we're just gonna pop off this hose. So that hose was pretty seized on there, leaking out of the radiator. 
as well as out of this hose and the thermostat. I think now we're gonna attack this. So I was just able to pop this hose connector free by coming in through here and prying it off like that. And surprisingly, nothing really came out. So now that's off. Now hopefully we can get to that hose clamp. I'm gonna be using six small socket with universal ball joint, which can sneak right up through here and get on there. I was able to sneak this up there, put it on, and then attach the rest of the ratchet and we're loosening it. Okay, that one took a while, but with some patience, we got it. I think I'm going to take off this bolt and then the one on the other side, just to get more room here. Okay, so I got this first bolt out, but to get this second bolt, we're going to need to take out this bolt, which is for the power of steering pump. Same thing as this, it's just over here now. So we were able to get that bolt out by releasing this and then just pushing it up a little bit along with the sway bar, we could sneak in the 10 mil. So that gives us some extra play over here, but try not to stress it too much because it is a hard plastic line, you know, all the way up there to down here, it's one piece. So you do not want to break that. So just be careful and mindful of that. So now we're gonna take out these two bolts that connect the thermostat to the water pump. And then it's just that hose clamp back there. And then the thermostat's free. Okay, so we got one of the thermostat bolts out. I was able to move this and then sneak up there. But for that one, you're gonna need a 10 mil wrench on it from here. We've got the thermostat disconnected, but don't forget to Disconnect the plug. Okay, there it is. You can see the back of it here. I'm gonna go ahead and get that unplugged. And this is that other hose clamp that we needed to take off to. So coming from back here, I was able to undo that connector. See right there. And then I think also from this angle, we'll be able to undo that six millimeter bolt on that hose clamp and then get that hose disconnected. I was able to sneak a six mil socket or six mil wrench in here and get that out very, very slowly. But then I was able to reach through here and pull this hose off. So you only want to disconnect one side. And so now let's pull out the thermostat which we will do through here. We've got the thermostat out. So you can, it'll be in the car kind of like this. So, uh, you know, we got under there, got that hose off, got all these hoses off, two bolts and uh, electrical clip sensor plug-in thing. And, uh, yeah, then you just snake it through. You're gonna want to pay attention to how this is set up because you're gonna want to bolt this hose on in the same orientation to the new thermostat. That way you can just snake it up in there after you put the new water pump in. So I'm gonna leave this for now because I don't have the new parts yet. So yeah. Also make sure you keep organization of all your, you know, bolts, screws, clips, all of that stuff, because this job is pretty involved and you don't want to go to put the car back together and end up with extra screws or anything like that. So organization is key here. Uh, yeah, let me show you what it looks like without the thermostat. So you can see all the hoses that we disconnected. Then we have full access to the water pump. And uh, 
yeah, got that hose back there on it and the two bolts and it should just come out. As you can see, got that hose disconnected. It was easier to use a flathead from this angle right through here. And then it just slipped off really easily. Here's what it took with the sway bar loose as well as this coolant line. I was able to sneak through here with a universal joint and you can see I have an E14 on there even though they are E12 bolts. Uh, we are gonna be replacing the bolts as should you and the E14 was just easier to get on there. We got that last bolt loose and it has fallen off the block. Don't forget to disconnect this clip. Get it out of the way one more time. And let's pull the water pump out. There she is. All right, so new parts came in. So basically what you wanna do first is disconnect the hose from your old thermostat and put it on the new one in the same orientation. All right, so we got the new water pump and new bolts. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna plug in this hose and put it in. All right, so we got the water pump in here. It's not screwed in, but we got that back hose back on. And now we're gonna put the bolts in. Okay, we got it in. Don't forget to torque down to 15 Newton meters of force. So now we're gonna get this plug back in. All right, so we got that plugged in. Make sure you route the wires up above the pump so that it's not in the way of the thermostat. So now we're gonna do the thermostat. So it's oriented like this. You got two quick release hoses and then that one, which is just a normal hose clamp. And then this one, which goes to the water pump. So now that we've got that back hose on, before we screw the thermostat in, we're going to get this quick connector put on there. And then this one back there with the hose clamp. And then this one here. Now, if you took, if you ended up taking out the quick release clips, make sure you put them back in before putting on the pipe. Now, when you're putting these quick, uh, quick release connectors on, make sure that they're fully seated. Um, you can see that it is all the way flush there. And basically you can tell if it's not seated by the quick release clamp it will not go all the way in and you'll be able to just pull this off very easily. But now that one's on there. So then we're gonna get this one in the back that has the hose clamp. We've got that hose hooked up and clamped on. Now it's just this one. And then we get to start buttoning everything back up. Don't forget the thermostat connector. So just clip in. In case you wanted to see it, this is what it looks like when it's not fully seated. So you'll still be able to see the connection point. Even though this went down, it's not fully on, see? So you wanna pop that connection back up, make sure you get it fully on and then push it down and it shouldn't come off so easily. Also, another way to align these, like something to help, is this right here will line up with the middle of that. So, just like that. All right, now that we've got all the hoses connected, you're gonna wanna go around and just make sure that everything's flush and you got everything on tight enough. And then we can go ahead, throw these bolts in and torque them down to eight Newton meters. Now that everything's back in and torqued down, connected, all of that, we're going to go ahead and put the bolts back in for this coolant hard line on either side. <laughs> I just tore my glove. We're going to get these nuts back on for this line, as well as the sway bar pushing bolts. Gonna get those back in. These are gonna be torqued down to 21 Newton meters. So make sure that you're torquing all your stuff. And yeah, we're also gonna put the radiator drain plug back in. You just wanna get it tight enough to where it's 
flush with this control sleeve and make sure to not tighten it too much. All right, so we got the intercooler uh, hooked up. Um, so one thing to note about doing this is there's this piece and it slots into the intercooler. And then there's also the side piece that will slot in as well. And then on this side, there's just a little tab up here. It's just this little tab up here and the screw. And now when you're putting this piece in, make sure you get it in that channel so you can't push it up and that will hold it in the bottom of your inner cooler. All right, next we're gonna put the fan back in. Now, when you're putting the fan in, um, when you're putting the fan in, it's got, it's got these slots down here that you've got to guide it into. Now you also have all this cooling hoses and stuff, so you can see I already put this one out of the way. But we're just gonna slide it down in there, make sure it sits in these at the bottom of the intercooler. And then we have one bolt here and one bolt here. And then the plug. And then the cooling hose snaps back in. Okay, so we got this back in, got that bolt there. Got the bolt down there. Um, we got it in the clips on both sides. It's seated nicely. Going underneath, making sure it landed in the radiator. It's sitting nicely. So, we can go ahead and plug it in. All right, now we're gonna do the shrouding. It's as easy on as it was off. I just put these you put this piece here, you got the clips, two screws, and then this piece just clips in. Okay, so now we just have the underpan, which is the eight mil bolts, as well as the stiffening plate, which I think are 13s or 14 or 15. I think they're 15. But yeah, then we're going to fill her up with coolant. Uh, make sure you look at your specs and pre-dilute it. And then I'll show you the bleeding procedure. All right, so as you can see, I have the battery charger hooked up. Um, funnel of coolant. You can hear it going. I've already started the process, but you can see it's sucking in, taking air out. So the way that you do this is you come in here, put the key on, put the key in, press start once, so you're just in auxiliary mode, turn your air all the way up on one fan speed, and then press your pedal down until you hit the button, and then push the button down for 10 seconds. And then you should hear the water pump kick on, or if you have one of those cool no spill funnels that are clear, you'll be able to see it from the driver's seat. But yeah, it should take about 10 minutes. Um, I recommend doing it at least twice and you'll have to take the key out uh, to do it again. And don't close your door because that will stop the process. So turn off your dome lights, all of that. And now we just wait. All right, car is all put together. Um, we got coolant topped off. Uh, I have to charge the battery as you see because it died on me. But as you can see in here, got coolant. And yeah, it ended up taking about one and nine tenths of a gallon. This was the second gallon of coolant. So you can get away with just one jug because the remainder of the coolant is stuck in the block while doing this job. So yeah, you'll have a bunch of extra, you'll have a bunch of extra coolant if you bought two jugs like me, but yeah. All right, so I hope you learned something from this. I hope I helped somebody else out with an X-Drive N55 because this is not an easy job, nor is it cheap to do at the dealership. Parts alone are about 460, somewhere around there, so. Yeah, um, 
I'll probably post more about this car, any more mods, anything like that. So yeah, stay tuned guys.